How to Live a Mediocre Life in 7 Steps Nowadays, we are surrounded by people trying to teach us how to live better, how to improve ourselves, how to reach our goals. I could go on and on. YouTube channels popping up like mushrooms using big words like personal growth to lead us to believe that their videos can actually help us, as if it really depended on us anyway. But none of them tell us how to live the rest of our days worse. That's pure discrimination. But don't worry, today you're in the right place. If you want some ideas on how to live a mediocre and unhappy life, I am here to help you. So let's get started. Number 1. Start the day without a plan. A good day starts in the morning, and how better to start the day than by waking up whenever we feel like it, possibly at a different time every day. The exact time we wake up in the morning will depend exclusively on the time we went to sleep the night before, and what's the best time to go to bed? You got it, whenever we feel like. The later we wake up in the morning, the better. The goal is generally to wake up at a time when the rest of the world has already been active for three or four hours. As soon as we wake up, the first thing we should do is open up Facebook and read all the sensationalist headlines from the various newspapers, you know, to get us in a good mood. Then, go to the comments section of these articles for about 15 to 20 minutes. Here we'll find ourselves reading tidbits of wisdom from people with University of Life degrees who always have a lot to teach us. As a guideline, the more likes a comment gets on Facebook, the more rhetorical it'll probably be. Here we can find great inspiration to get our day off to the right start. When we finally feel up to it, we can get out of bed and, if we feel like it, we can have breakfast. Breakfast is not a big meal and so a nice muffin usually gives us all the nutrients our body needs. After breakfast, it's time to get to work. But first, let's take a quick look at how many likes we got on our last Instagram photo and how many times our last tweet was shared. The opinions of others really matter to us. Number 2. Wait for opportunities to come your way. At this point, it's time to take action and make the most of the opportunities that will knock on our door. The drawback, however, is that more often than not, the long-awaited opportunities won't present themselves just like that. But since even if they do, we have no guarantee of success, at least we save our energy by not trying to actively look for them. The key here is to not look for opportunities proactively. Our future is in the hands of fate, so there's no reason to bother trying. If it's meant to be, our dream job will find us. After all, we did send out two resumes last month, right? Number 3. Learn to say no to what's new. Trying new things and stepping out of our comfort zone will in most cases prove to be a waste of time, so why bother? We should learn to say no whenever a friend invites us to try something new, perhaps a new hobby or activity. After all, unless it's something we're already experts at, why bother taking the chance and risk looking bad in front of our friends? Failure is for losers, and the best way to never fail is to never try. Next time your boss asks you to work on a project that's not strictly within your job description, you know, the exact job you've been doing for the last 20 years, just say no. After you refuse a couple of times, the boss will get the message and leave you alone. Number 4. Always be suspicious of others. We must always be suspicious of everything and everyone. Remember, the world is evil, and others want to take advantage of us. Anyone who smiles at us probably does so because they want something in return. Remember that article you read on Facebook this morning where a young girl managed to become an executive in a major company? Well, that's impossible. Surely there must be something behind it. After all, if you didn't make it, it's impossible that she could have made it. Number 5. Ignore your flaws. You can't change. We should absolutely avoid wasting time trying to improve ourselves. We are real people. If someone gives us constructive criticism, we should turn defensive and let them know that we're made this way. Take it or leave it. It's a matter of pride. We always want to be ourselves. And if they want us, they have to accept us the way we are and never, ever dare to criticize us. 
If one day we don't find a partner because we haven't taken care of ourselves, or we don't find a job because we don't have the required knowledge, it won't be our fault. It must be the system's fault. After all, our moms always told us how smart and handsome we are. As I said before, we are real people, and real people do not change. Moreover, as our cousin Jeremiah always tells us, admitting to having flaws that can be improved is a weak behavior, and Jeremiah really knows his stuff. Number six, focus on the things you cannot control. The planet is falling apart, and while we know we don't have the magic pill to solve 99.9% .9 of the world's problems, it's important that we spend at least two to three hours a day constantly expressing our disappointment and letting everyone hear our opinion about these macro issues. After all, everyone is waiting for our tweet on the subject to know exactly what we think about it. All of our friends can't wait to hear our opinions as virologists, as economists, as scientists, and of course, as football managers, no matter how ignorant we actually are on these subjects. Oh, and this is important. Let's just focus on criticizing everything and everybody, but avoid proposing solutions at all costs, because we risk finding out that 99% of the time, solutions to big problems are not as simple as we want to believe they are. And by expressing a more elaborate and perhaps controversial opinion, we risk not being as popular as we are when we're just being rhetorical. Number seven, never stop daydreaming. We must run away from reality. We should not look at life as it really is, but instead, we should think that even though we don't have a clear plan, somehow the future will be brighter. Everything's going to be okay. In the meantime, we should look for distractions that allow us to avoid facing the obstacles in front of us. We should not think about what we can do to improve ourselves or how to fix our shortcomings, but we should fantasize every day about what our life would be like if we somehow became celebrities overnight or won the lottery. Oh, and don't forget to buy a ticket for tonight's draw. And why not? Maybe even get a scratch card. We are due some luck after all. And let's always compare our lives with this fantastic and ephemeral reality, and let's bear a grudge against those who have more than us. After all, it's their fault if we can't make our dreams come true. And if we can't make it, then they shouldn't either. If you liked this video, don't miss the video, The One Thing All Successful People Have in Common, in which I talk about the difference between internal and external locus of control. Find the link on the screen. Have a great day, everyone, and don't forget to activate the notification bell if you haven't already. See you soon.